Hi, this is Glenda from Beautiful Soaps by Glenda, and today I will be testing two full screen discs in an attempt to make a snowflake. I start by measuring the colorants. I'm using a half a teaspoon of ultramarine blue pigment. I also have some titanium dioxide and then some teal turquoise mica. I had warmed up my oils to 107 Fahrenheit, which in Celsius it's about 41 degrees. The light water solution is at 24 Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is room temperature for me. I've added the light water solution to the oils, and I'm going to start by stirring them briefly, probably for about a minute. I also want to measure a fragrance that I want to use, and this is Moonlight Bath from Elements Bath & Body. I read a review from somebody who said that this was a well-behaving fragrance, however, a lot of fragrances don't behave well with my recipe. My recipe has a high percentage of hard fats and oils. It has shea butter, coconut oil, beef tallow. It also has olive oil and castor oil. My plan is to add about one ounce of the soap butter into this to see how the fragrance does. I want to bring the soap to a motion phase, so I'm first stirring with a spatula for about 30 seconds. Then I'm going to use the stick blender and I'm going to use it for no more than 10 seconds in low speed. After using it for 10 seconds, I'm going to go back to stirring and I'm going to stir for another 30 seconds. I'm going to repeat this process three to four times so that it took me in total about three minutes to reach a motion phase. I separated the one ounce of soap batter and poured it into the cup that had that tiny bit of fragrance and I'm going to blend it quickly and let it sit for a couple minutes to see what it does. Meanwhile, I'm going to measure the rosemary oleo resin or ROE extract that I'm going to add to the soap. This is used in very small amounts, so small that I need to use a jeweler's scale to measure it. It's about 0.05% of the total mix that needs to be used and it helps in preventing oxidation from the oils which in turn helps prevent dreaded orange spots or DOS. This will give the soap batter a slightly orange or brown tone however this doesn't last in the final soap and it's not noticeable especially if you use colorants. I'm checking the status of the soap that I separated earlier and as you can see it has reached a light trace. However, my main soap butter has not reached any kind of trace yet. It's still at the motion phase. So this tells me that the fragrance is interacted with, interacting with the soap butter and causing it to thicken up a little bit. I decided to use a different fragrance instead so I will be using Winter Wonderland from Nurture Soap that has usually acted well for me. After adding the fragrance, I divided the soap butter into different containers and then stirred the colorants in. I only use the spatula or spoon to mix them because I wanted to avoid using the stick blender. The stick blender will probably cause them to get thicker faster. In hindsight, I should have used a blue mica that was a well-behaving mica instead of the ultramarine blue pigment because I am aware and it has happened to me before where the ultramarine blue pigment causes the soap butter to reach a thicker trace even faster than other colorants from the same recipe in the same batch. The same can be said about the titanium dioxide. At the time though I thought I was gonna be okay because most of the videos that I had watched about using pull screen discs mention that it worked better if the butter was at medium trace that if it was too thin it didn't work as well so I thought well if my colorants make the butter slightly thicker it should be fine but I was wrong. <laughs> You'll see. 
I think the fragrance may have also played a minor role in this particular recipe because even though I have used it before and it has behaved well, I didn't use it for intricate swirls. So I'm not for certain that it didn't have anything to do either. Um, so first I'm going to test the first disc. Uh, this disc didn't actually work out as far as the design goes. And I start by just pouring the darkest color at the bottom and trying to make it cover all of the bottom. So I had to tilt it and move it around so that the entire surface was covered. Then I tried to add the second color using the funnel, but as you can tell, it's too thick for it to go through the funnel. So I had to remove it and just add it straight into it. I used the center road as a guide so that the soap batter will go through it and be somewhat centered in the soap. I continued this until I had filled half of the mold. Then I started getting ready for the second soap which was going to be used with the same mix. So now you can see that by now the soap batter is even thicker for the second disc. To make matters worse, I needed to use the same rod for the second disc. So trying to switch rods with slippery hands that are full with soap batter is not a good idea. I recommend that you prepare your rod in advance. And to do that, this is what you have to do. First, you thread one knot into the rod about half an inch in. Then you add the disc and cover it with the second knot and tighten it so that it doesn't move. Then you can use it in your prepare mold and it will be ready for the next time you want to make soap. Now back to the soap. I did the same thing as with the previous soap. I first poured a thick layer of the dark blue at the bottom and I had to move it around so that it will cover the entire surface of the bottom. Then I alternated the other colors, the light turquoise steel and the white portions. And at some point, uh, the soap was so thick that I thought it might help if I added some oil in it to help loosen it up. And it did help a little bit, but it was still very thick. So I kept pouring all the colors trying to keep them somewhat center even though I'm not sure that I was successful at doing that. When I was done adding all of the colors I started pulling on the road very slowly. I have not sped up this portion because I want you to see how slowly it actually is. It took me a whole minute to bring it up. It felt heavy and it felt like I was bringing up a lot of the soap with it as well and that was why I was trying to be careful with it. When I make a small soaps like this I probably get four bars out of this. I have a hard time reaching gel so I usually force gel by using a heating pad. I put the whole PVC pipe inside a box and I put the box on top of a heating pad on high for about an hour. And then usually the next day is ready to come out but if I can wait longer I will and sometimes I also I freeze the PVC pipe for about an hour before attempting to get the soap out and that usually works and I'm able to slide it out so this is what happened the next day the first bar doesn't have a whole lot of definition from the pull screen disc however on the second bar, it is more noticeable. And then I think that the third one that has a lot of white and light tones, you could actually see, see it better because it makes contrast with the dark blue. But anyway, this is what it looks like. I uh, will be attempting this again, hopefully next Christmas or sooner. Uh, and I'll try to keep my batter more fluid next time. And in case you're curious, that very first uh, screen disc that I use, this is what it looked like. If you are interested in the 
full screen disc. I do have it on my store and I'm going to put a link to it below. Thank you for joining me and see you next time. Bye.